Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another chance to do another tile for our mosaic. Um, on one of the last videos, I showed that I had started doing this opus size tile. And for each of the mosaics, patterns I'm putting these on here. And the two that I'm going to show you today are Antidots and Rixty. And Rixty is an interesting pattern. It's one that uh, was a gift to Rick Roberts, I think on his 60th birthday. So that's how they came up with the name Rixty. And Antidots is by Anita Roby Lavery, and she's a CZT. And one of the places that I have used that pattern is in this tile. And I put it in the center like this, and I think that's really pretty. So um, I'm back to the basic subscription with Zoom. So I only have 40 minutes, but if this goes longer, I can always start and stop again and you won't really notice it. Um, if you haven't watched the first video, the way that we do this Z string is to simply put a mark at the center of each side of your tile. I use a canning jar lid to mark this on both sides. And then I just put a simple curve through here. And that is our Z string. So far, we have four tiles completed. And this will be our fifth. I kind of changed my camera setup. And I hope that's still going to be good. I'm still struggling with trying to keep my hands out of the way. So we're gonna need a three and a half inch tile with your Z string marked on it. Uh, Micron 01 in black is what I'm using for this series. A graphite pencil, a blending stump, and possibly a kneaded eraser. And again, I'm gonna show you this version of Antidots. I really like that. It's a very simple pattern. It is one that you can do in a continuous line. So let me zoom in. And by continuous line, I mean that you don't pick your pin up while you're doing it. So let's just start with one little petal and then I'm going to go back in the other direction and then back again in this direction. So for the basic pattern you have those three lines and then she doesn't fill it in on the step out but um, that's an option, a variation. Okay so one two, three, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in. This one is another one that's easy to do and it becomes, for me, meditative. And I think that's one of the things that I'm focusing on lately or patterns that are easy for a relaxing time while you do Zentangle. Oh. Okay, one, then we're just gonna let that one go behind a little bit and fill that in. Okay, now I'm gonna go between these petals. 
One, two, three. You can make these as thin or as fat as you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and put another one here. Two, three. Now I was trying to set up my camera so that my hand doesn't get in the way. I watched a video by another lady this morning and hers was kind of to the side, but because of the way my desk is set up, I couldn't get that to work. So I'm just trying to always be mindful of where my hand is at and hopefully mindful of not going off the screen. I'm sorry I did that too many times on the last video. So I'm just gonna keep going around like that and filling this in. You get to here, you can just come up to that area. And I'm going to put an orb in here just to fill in that space. And then I'm going to come off of that. And this is just the way I do it. And I encourage you to look at the way others do their patterns. I do that a lot, even now. Okay. Because it's fun to come up with other ideas and different ways to do these. Okay, I'm going to put another orb in this one. Start that one. Then it would be going this way and this way. And it's going behind that string. Okay, let's go ahead and go with this one. One, two, three. And we're not worrying about it has to go in one certain direction or another. It has to make a perfect flower pattern. None of that. We're just enjoying the pattern. And when I remind myself of that, I enjoy my tangled time a lot more. We have that one go behind, so it would kind of go like this and come around. Let's just put a little dot in there. Anti dots is a good filler in any space. Remember to relax your shoulders. Remember to breathe. Breathing's important. <laughs> I think it's fun when I, in the past, when I've watched videos for exercise programs where they tell you, don't forget to breathe. And I do agree, breathing's important. Okay, just keep going.
You could just fill in that, the smaller spaces, just darken it. This one's going to go off the page if you want to. This is just a scrap piece of paper. I'm going to slide that under. And if I go off the page, it would kind of go like this, back around and back down. Okay. Fill it in. Okay. This way, this way, this one would come around like this. Okay. And then you move your scrap piece of paper away. Again, I learned that from Kelly Barone. I think it was a great idea. For these, I'm just going to kind of fill that in and then put an orb in here. Okay, it doesn't matter. We're not being graded. It's not a contest. We don't have to be perfect. Okay, we're going to stop when we get to our string line. Just going to put an orb there. Maybe another orb there. Just keep going until you run out of space for these patterns. And let's put some little orbs there. Okay, so we're just going to keep filling that in. And again, we're stopping at that string line. That one looks a little odd, but it's okay. We probably won't notice it when we're finished. And yours isn't going to look just like mine. And that's not the point of these videos. The point is to teach you these patterns so that you can make yours look the way that you want because this is your art. And the nice thing about these videos is you can speed them up, slow them down. When I purchase classes, I tend to prefer the recordings because of that very thing that I can speed it up or slow it down as needed.
If I forget to talk, that's okay. <laughs> Just follow along. Okay, I kind of got this one stuck behind here. So, We'll just hide one there. Okay, just keep going. I think I'll just put some orbs here. Fill that one in. We're going to pretend that one comes up kind of like that. Going behind these other two panels. Little orb there. That one a little small. Same thing here. I'm just going to make it small and make it fit. And then we have this other side to go. And I'll try to go a little bit faster on this one. And I hope you don't hear the mowers in the background. It's at my neighbor's house, so hopefully it's not something bothering you. One time I tried putting music in the background and that did not go over very well. So you get to hear me talk or you get silence when I get into this and I forget. Okay, let's go here, see what we can do. Again, we're not looking for a particular outcome. Mm. I'll sneak one in here. Have it go behind, behind again.
Now your hand can get a little bit tired. So if it does, just do some stretches, okay? Just gonna put an orb here. Let's go with this one. So this is kind of a test for me since I'm not paying for the Zoom license anymore for the best way to work this out. I don't want to rush. So probably end up having to just do two recordings, but that won't show up for you because I'll splice them together. It's amazing what I've learned since starting to do the YouTube videos. My son is a skateboarder. He's now a professional skateboarder just recently, and he has been editing videos for quite some time. Let's try coming back this direction just to see what happens. This one go around. Not filling those in quite as neatly as I usually would, because I was trying to rush. But it's, it's kind of funny because when I finish these videos, I like to go back and watch and make sure that I didn't goof up too much. And I enjoy watching Zentangle videos. It is meditative to me. And I've had people tell me that for my videos. And I was telling my sister that I kind of get caught up watching my, my own videos sometimes. And I hope that's not goofy, but um, maybe that means I'm doing okay. All right, let's do a small one here. And I didn't put all three lines, but that's okay. Put here. The line's coming, and it's kind of an odd shape, but I'm trying to fit it in that corner. All right. There we have the first part. Zoom out just a little bit. Um, this one, if you wanted to, you could you know, put a little bit of shading. So we have our little anti-dots that comes around like this. And if you're following what I'm doing, then you've darkened that center. So 
you could come along here and maybe just put shading in each of these outside rings or not rings, but um, it's like an aura. And that would be a lot of shading for you to have to watch when I'm doing this. So um, I'm only going to add the shading for now that goes along each edge. And then I might come back and add some more shading. But for now, this is all I'm going to do. And this is the center arc. So I'm making that one a little bit darker. And this one, I'm just going to soften that one. Pull it a little bit in towards the pattern. And I think for now, I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. And then I'm already 30 minutes in on this, so I'm going to uh, have to stop my Zoom and come back in. And I'll be right back. Okay, so now we are ready to do Rixty. Okay, and I want to show you again how I did it on this. So there are lots of different ways that you can do Rixty. And uh, it's a simple pattern, but you can have a lot of fun with it. And this is sort of a combination of Rixty and Zinger, but I'll probably do that anyway. Let me put this right and see it. Okay. So Rixty, let's start in this corner. Rixty starts with a stem. Okay. Stem in the middle. So it starts with a stem, and then at the top of that stem, you're going to put a line and create a triangle on each side, and then we're going to fill that in, but we're going to leave the stem there in the center. Okay. And then we're going to put an aura or outline around that. And I tend to kind of round my corners there. And that's totally fine. You do it the way that you like it. Okay. And one of the fun things about Rixty is that you can let it divide and multiply. So I'm going to add the stem coming in this direction. And fill that in. And then I'm going to come around through my aura. And I'm going to have one come over in this direction now. Your stems don't have to be a certain size. And neither do your triangles. Make these the way that you like them. Okay. So I'm going to have this one come up one more time. 
And I'm having it turn a little. And then put my aura. Then I'm going to have this come out just a little bit more. And then I'm going to add my little zinger top. This one's coming around. Add my aura. And you could put your little zinger top right on top of this one instead. Okay, so now it looks like this one has grown out of something similar to that. And then I'm going to add kind of like a little stripe in here. And I think that makes it fun. All right. So another way that we can do zinger is I'm going to have this come out just like we did. Add my little triangle, but this time I'm not going to fill it in. Okay. Now I'm going to add my top. I'm going to try to remember to not round my corners just so you can see the difference. And then my little stem is going to come up from behind. Okay, we're going to add another top and triangles. And then add our aura. Okay. And this time we're going to divide. Come out this way. Oops, that's okay. All right, and we could have it divide again. And you can see that my stems are not all exactly the same. And my little Ripsty triangles are also not exactly the same. And out of this one, I'm just going to do a little spiral and bring it back down. It has kind of the sparkly end to it. This one is going to come up this way. Try and remember how I did the little curly cue at the end. So it comes around like this. And yeah, I should have started a little bit further over and then bring it around like this. So it goes behind, like so. Okay, that doesn't match up exactly there, but you get the idea.
And we could even have another one come off. I'll try to make that one a little bit smaller, like it's a baby. It's new. And then we'll just do a little swirl on that one. And I think I saw where someone had put the little dots along the end, and I thought that was cute. Okay, so for the rest of this, we'll just do combination. The ones that we've already done. I think that um, the ones like this are my favorites. These are also fun to use in organic botanical type art that you want to do. And I'm back to curving mine. And for these uh, mosaic tiles, I have practiced these on my opus, but I don't practice them ahead of time. So I'm not absolutely sure how they're gonna look together. <laughs> and that's really how it is with all of our Zentangle. We shouldn't worry about the outcome. Just enjoy what you're doing. This one, I'm not going to add the striping. Should have room to add a couple of these now. So I tend to have straight corners here, but when I put the aura, around it. I like to round it. Bring it a little bit further. Um, if you look at what others have done with Rick Steen, some people get a lot more detailed and um, lots of cool ideas for what people have done with this. So check them out. All right. Have another one come up this way. And I'm not trying to worry about how these might meet up with the other tiles in our mosaic. You might find that you don't like this combination and you can put these patterns together in other ways. Don't use RIPSD or don't use antidots. I'm gonna have this one. Start to go off the edge. Now it just looks like it kept going. Another one coming this way.
catcher. All right. I guess it would help if I would put this in the center of the screen. And again, I'm trying to keep my head behind my camera, my hand in front of my camera, <laughs> and still make this look good. And remember, this is if you're following along, this is your mosaic. You could add other things in here as you like. So let's back it up, see what we think. So there's our whole tile. And I'm going to add my graphite along here for our inner circle. I lost my blending stump somewhere. Okay, let me grab another one. Oh, I found it. Okay, so now we're just going to soften that. And I do make this line a little bit darker than the shading that I do like along here. And I'm just going to soften it to pull it toward the center and not have an edge. We do want kind of a gradient here, just like along this, just soften it so it just kind of blends toward the center. And then on these little tops that look like zinger, I'm just going to put shading on one edge. Uh, as far as the rest of, of Rixty, I'm not sure <laughs> how to shade it, but give some dimension to these tops if you add a little bit there. Okay. So there you go. Let's zoom out and bring in our other tiles and see what we think. See how they match up. Okay. So we have five. Five tiles for a mosaic so far. I like it. I wasn't sure how these two were going to do together, but it's okay. All right. So for today's tile, we had Rick Steve and Anti Dots. And we have finished our fifth tile in this mosaic series. Um, tomorrow's Mother's Day. And I hope for you mothers out there that you have a wonderful day. I am grateful 
to be a mother. I'm grateful for my children, my grandchildren, and my family. Uh, my mother passed away about 10 years ago, so uh, I still think of her daily and send her love. And uh, I hope you guys have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week ahead. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye.